Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we're actually going to dive back into some comic books and we're going to wrap up a story that I started. I actually reviewed the first two parts of the story, but I never got around to reviewing the ending actually. So I apologize for that. You know, I, I took a long time. I thought I did it actually. That's why I haven't done it again. Cause I was like, oh no, I've, I've reviewed that whole thing. There's no, you know, no way I missed that one. And then I was going back looking at my episodes and I'm like, nope, totally missed it. Absolutely. And I think there's another one called a uh, Venom Spider-Man Double Trouble. We did like issue one, but I never did the the finished version so at some point over the next like probably in august i'll probably touch like do the scream review of the first five issues of scream and then i'll do one for the sixth issue of scream uh, and then also i'll do a, an episode about the ravencroft miniseries and then i'll do the double trouble one as well so all those i'll do like in august and those will just be one-off things to kind of break up some of the flash thompson stuff we're going to talk about but as we're building up getting back to flash thompson i thought you know this would be a good eddie brock story to wrap up on because it takes place in the the uh, pages of marvel action spider-man which is an IDW book that we talked about before. And uh, it's got a great team, Dawson, Tinto. The artwork's actually really good. Um, there's a uh, John Boy Meyer does uh, variant covers for these, which are pretty hard to find, actually. I've never physically seen one in California, but when I moved here to Florida, I saw them, but they're marked up, obviously, because, you know, these came out a couple months ago. But this is definitely written for kids. But the reason I took note of it and why I liked it, uh, you know, and why, you know, I did reviews on them was because when I read the first issue, I noticed that the version of Eddie Brock they're going for is a lot like the movie. It's a, probably the closest version to the Tom Hardy movie that we've seen. Uh, but like I said, granted, this is written for kids, though. So most adults, you know, and unless you're big, you know, Tom Hardy fans, you know, and like that version of Venom like I do, uh, then you, I don't know if you'll get much out of this. I mean, this is definitely written for a younger audience. So uh, so the dialogue's kind of goofy. In fact, the you know, the issue 12, the newest one that uh, came out, the last one that came out, this wraps up the whole series, and they decided to end this run, and they're relaunching it with a new number one, and a new writer and new team and everything um, and I don't know if that's because sales were down or, or what the deal is or they just want to go in a new direction but they set up a lot in these 12 issues so I hope that kind of does carry over into the next arc because basically you know Spider-Man, Miles, and Gwen are the focus of this story and it's all three of them being young and having powers together getting them at slightly different times and uh, and then working together and you know uh, them learning about friendship and teamwork and all that stuff and they have an internship that Tony Stark put together obviously so there's a little bit of that kind of reminiscent of some of the cartoon stuff that's been out in the past couple of years and uh, and then the last episode or issue that we talked about we discovered this universe version of Dr. Octopus. So he was just Otto Octavius and he's like, you know, experimenting in his lab and he uses arms for the first time. He puts the robotic arms on him and then he fights against Spider-Man and Venom and Miles and Gwen. Uh, and so, yeah, so that's kind of where we left off. And then Dr. Octopus got knocked out unconscious. There was an explosion and he was sent to the hospital. Well, in this issue, he comes back. So there is spoilers, uh, but he's on the cover. But I'll say, if you haven't read this yet, spoilers. But it has been out for a couple months now. And the trade paperback is out now for $9.99. And you can get it. It has issues 10, 11, and 12. All three of these in. And it's like a little digest size. And you can pick that up for $9.99 at your local comic store and Amazon, wherever you buy your books right now. So, uh, yeah, this is a fun series. You know, like I said, it's definitely for kids, but because Eddie in this one is a journalist and his, like, he was trying to crack a story from this big organization and then his laptop, his phone, and all the stuff that had evidence on it was taken from him. So then he got, uh, you know, bonded with the suit, you know, outside of that, uh, you know, uh, his stuff being stolen. I guess the people who stole it might have had the suit and, you know, he got bonded with the suit that way. So again, very movie-like. And then now he's trying to go prove his innocence um, and he's out there looking for his phone, his laptop, so he can reveal what was happening in this lab. So we find out that Otto Octavius is a part of that and he works for someone called the Big Boss. And uh, obviously that's a pretty easy guess to figure out who it is, uh, but, uh, you know, it is Kingpin, obviously. And so uh, in this story, it's the three spider people teaming up with Venom and they're constantly like, dude, don't eat them. You said you wouldn't eat them. You know, it's like, there's a lot of humor like that. But then there's also a lot of silly dialogue where it's like they're naming stuff like Miles blast venom and he's like hey i blasted venom i guess that's called a venom blast now and you know it's like all of them they're like trying to name dr octopus they're like hey it's mr octopus or octopus guy and then uh, he goes hey i went to college for seven years and then gwen goes okay fine dr octopus geez and then he's like yes i like the sound of that and then someone's like hey how about doc Oct for short and it's like 
So it's just them. It, that's most of the dialogue actually in this issue. So it's again, it's goofy. It's for kids. Uh, but because that version of Eddie is in here and he's kind of, uh, you know, has a, a slightly broken moral compass, but not really like he's still doing the right thing. And he ultimately wants to do the right thing and knows what the right thing is. But he has a little trouble with doing that sometimes. And the suit is very aggressive in this version. So he's constantly going back and forth, although you don't see inner di dialogue from the suit, which I, I would have liked to see that so you can get more of the character in there. But what you see is is pretty good and it's easy for a child to like wrap their head around and kind of ingest and, and enjoy it hopefully so um yeah but it's just them teaming up and fighting against dark octopus and learning about the big boss who is the kingpin who is something the black cat you know they learned through the black cat that she was probably working for someone named the big boss and now it looks like all right after 12 issues we basically found out the kingpin exists and uh, and he's been hiring these different villains to uh, do things for him or uh, scientists you know like doc ock uh, upgrading his gear so that way he could do stuff for you know for wilson fisk or they don't know it's wilson fisk they just know he's called the kingpin so um yeah just a pretty good book but anyway i just want to talk briefly about it not much really to say um i will show off some of the artwork in here there's the page where we did the venom blast there with uh miles but yeah really good artwork actually i like it a lot eddie looks a little different you know he's like little looks a little tom hardy-ish he's got a tight t-shirt on and short dark hair uh, you know short brown hair and spiky so uh yeah like i said kind of reminds me of the movie version and then at the end because the kids saved the day they got to meet tony stark because uh, they in their real lives as school students they're entering a journalist contest and so they've gotten stories on you know the lizard and black hat and all these villains that spider-man has been fighting and now dr octopus so they thought that that would get them you know a chance to meet uh, you know uh, tony stark because they're like hey these are good articles with you know with superhero fights like that should definitely get tony stark's attention but in fact the one that you know the the, the, the article that won was a kid who rescued a dog from like a sewer and uh, and so tony stark shows up to hey sorry that dog was really cute but you guys did a good job so i'm here to answer one question each and then there's some humor there and uh, and then tony stark says look if you want to be a good hero just don't try to obsess over that just try to be a good person and do your best and as long as you keep trying to do the right thing even when you mess up as long as nobody dies you know like you know just keep your head up and keep going like don't give up on yourself and uh, and don't try to compare yourself to others and it was funny because when i was listening to this i was like wow that sounds like a lot of things bosses say to you when you work at a job and you're trying to either grow in that job or learn so you can take that what you learn to another job a lot of times bosses say stuff like that so i was like all right it's tony kind of being a boss to them in a way and just kind of giving them that pep speech of like hey and it's not that it's it's bull crap you know I, you know i've said that before too to people it's like Hey, just do your best. You know, if your job is to say hi to people when they walk into a store and then, you know, go up and ask them if they need help. If you, as long as you do those things, you're doing your job, you know? Um, and yes, there are ways, there are degrees where you can add some flair to it and make it fun and make it more exciting or where you actually, you know, uh, you know, get more sales or whatever than someone else does. But as long as you're trying your best and you're putting in some effort, that's really, that's all expect, that's expected of you. And so you don't have to make it a big deal. And I actually, that was something I had to learn when I was like, I was like, what am I not doing enough? Am I not? And they're just like, dude, you're fine, man. He's like, don't bug, don't bug people. Just kind of go up and talk to them, ask them what they, you know, need help with and just be yourself, you know, um, just don't swear and do any of that stuff, but just be yourself and follow the rules and, you know, just help people out. And that's, that's as easy as, you know, that's what jobs are. And a lot of times they, they can be that easy. And, uh, and so, yeah, so that was like, all right, cool. I, I can relate to that from Tony on this one. So anyway, Good issue, uh, Marvel Action 10, 11, and 12. And like I said, you can pick up the graphic novel now for $9.99 at your local comic store or on Comixology, wherever you're buying comics right now during these uh, very tough times. And hopefully a lot of your stores aren't shutting down again. I saw California was shutting down again, a couple other states. So that's heartbreaking, and I'm sure Florida might you know, might not be too far behind. I don't know yet. Uh, we'll see. But uh, it is hard because I know people are struggling right now financially, um, and because we're not getting a stimulus check every month, it's been hard for people to, to stay afloat and stuff during this. And I think we're nearing a lot of evictions coming up. And there's a lot of people going through a really tough time, myself included. I got this nice place, but I am out of money now. So uh, luckily I have a job. I start on Monday, um, but uh, hopefully it doesn't get shut down. Hopefully I can stay at that job and uh, and work through this. And, you know, and it's, it's a new world. It's going to be a lot of changes from here on out in the future. And so, you know, we got to start adapting in the best we can and, and be safe while we're doing it and listen to, you know, the, the professionals who are telling us, you know, what the new rules are and stuff. And as long as we do that, I think, you know, we're going to work out. Uh, so I hope anyway, you know, because um, I definitely don't like seeing people get sick or, or worse. Um, but anyway, let me know what you think. I just went off on a little tangent there. I'm sorry. Uh, let me know what you think of Marvel Action Spider-Man. If you've read this, 
Fun books. I highly recommend them. If you have kids, especially, make sure you pick some of these up. It's definitely for like a five to 10 year old reading level. Um, and I think that's what it's geared for is this kind of that age range. And it's a lot of fun. It'd be a good way to introduce uh, some, you know, someone in your life. If they're a kid, you have niece, nephew, or child of your own. Uh, if you want to introduce them to these characters, this is not a bad place to do it if they're in that age demographic. So let me know what you think down below. and We'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you guys in the future. Peace.